Hey guys, my name is Rafael. Um, I'm part of a team of two, uh, me and Chucky. Uh, we are working on a game called C4. And last week, um, we had this uh, task in our list that we needed to add some um, informations on the controls of the game. Like you can see here, hold N to place a beacon, hold, hold the left mouse. And then uh, several, because in our game, which is like a sandbox, you have several like tools that the player can use. We don't want to have a tutorial every time the player needs to learn something. So instead we needed a, a, a way to implement sprites or images um, and in line with the text and um, that, that was last week so February 20 something and uh, as a coincidence um, Unity announced on February 28th uh, that they integrated or they, they like bought the um, TextMesh Pro assets which was a plugin on the asset store uh, not for free, but now it's free and it's going to be soon native inside Unity. So that's really cool. The only thing is uh, we get it. We got it for our project by going to um, Asset Store. And then you can find in the Unity Essential uh, right here, Essentials, you can find uh, the uh, TextMesh Pro for free now. Uh, so you can get it. The only thing is I found there was not a lot of documentation online or tutorials whatsoever. So for creating sprites and making sure they fit and they are aligned with the text. It was um, kind of a trial and error for me. Um, so I decided to make a tutorial for uh, the future people using that plugin. Okay, so uh, if you want to have any sort of images or sprites in line with the text in your UI, um, this tutorial will be for you. Uh, I'm going to use uh, our game C4 as an example for this tutorial because it's going to be simpler for me to demonstrate the different things, but obviously um, you could do this on a totally empty project and uh, it's going to be the same thing. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is create a new canvas, so um, UI canvas, and we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to call this uh, tutorial canvas, just so you know. It's going to be a screen space, it's going to take my entire screen here. And um, let's just say that we'd like to have some text in our uh, canvas, so I'm going to create text. I'm going to place it in the top right corner here because it's not busy whatsoever. The very first thing that you want to do here if you want to use text is get rid of that component, which is the native Unity component. And you want to add this new one, which is Text Mesh Pro Text UI. So you add this here. I'm not going to go over all the details because this is very self-explanatory in my opinion okay so um, your text here and then a bunch of options like bold italic and whatnot font size color etc etc um, so I'm gonna type here example text you can see that it works just like in unity you have the anchors you have um, the uh, you can use the rectangle tool here move rotate scale and everything the pivot also you get extra settings like the margins here that you can move to create some sort of a boundary for the, the, the text if you want. And uh, obviously the whole point of this tutorial right now is to have some sprites aligned with this text. So the way it works in here is by having a um, in extra settings by having a sprite asset. If you don't have a sprite asset, um, it comes with one which is like a bunch of little emojis like this, which I'm going to explain um, very soon. So obviously you probably don't want this in your game. You want your own sprite, whatever that might be. Okay. And um, so you need to create your own sprite asset right here. To do this, um, you need to go in Photoshop and um, like I did here. And the way I found it to be really the most easy is to divide your sprite, uh, your um, sorry, your image here in four by four. So in Photoshop, I created a grid, as you can see here, there's four by four, and I just place all my different images or sprites that I want in those squares. Okay, you don't have to fill it if you don't have as many, like as much images, as many images as this, but um, you can always add in the future. So we use this for some sort of an inputs tutorial for our game in the text. So you can see the different keys that we have in the game, the left mouse click. And then you're gonna save this in your project. Just have it as a image, as a PNG with transparency, with alpha. And then you, to be able to place your sprite asset here, 
you need to create something that we call the sprite asset. So to do this, you need to go in window here and find text mesh pro and you're going to have this sprite importer. And the very first thing you want is place your your um, sprites that you want to import. So you can see that I have several ones here, but I just said I like to have my inputs in my game. And the next thing that you need, if you try to create sprite asset, it's not going to work. It's going to give you a console error, no reference exception, because it requires a sprite data source here, which is basically a script that's going to tell how to divide this image properly. Um, since I don't really know how that works, um, a good thing is that Unity, or not Unity, but uh, Text Mesh Pro included one example that is called Emoji 1, because their example is like emojis. And it's like a text um, file uh, that I can open in mono here to show you that is going to tell um, Text Mesh Pro how to divide your different images. So you can see that you pass here the resolution, uh, if it's rotated trim, the pivot. So you don't have to create that file, by the way. If you if you want, you can. But otherwise, I just use this one, which is dividing four by four, like I said here. It's going to divide 128, 128, 128, 128, 128, because this image is a 512 by 512. So every sprite is a 128, and that is why here it's 128. Okay, 128, 128, 128. Uh, you get it, I'm sure. You're not stupid. So here you put your file, your text file. In my case, I'm just gonna use the one that comes with the, the thing, the, the package. And then you do create sprite asset. It's gonna divide your sprite here in 16 by F, I mean 16 images, so four by four. You can see that we have 16 sprites imported. And then you need to save that sprite asset wherever you wanna use it. So I'm gonna go in uh, just right here. I'm gonna say new input. It's there you go. So if I go in my assets now, let me just clear this because it's annoying. If I go in here, I should see my new inputs, which is a sprite asset. And you can see that if I expand the list here, I can see all my different um, inputs that I, or inputs, sorry, all my different sprites that I can use in my text. The way it works is that every image here is gonna get an ID okay, that you cannot change. You can see your ID zero, ID one, ID two, and all you have to do is when you type the text, you do greater than or smaller than and greater than like this. And then you do uh, which sprite do you want? So you do sprite equals and you pass the ID. So if you put zero, it's going to take the very first ID. If you put one second, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, the problem right now is that since we don't have a sprite asset, it takes the default one, which is the emoji one. Um, so what you need to do is click here and choose your own, which in my case, the one we just did is new inputs. And you can see that now we have a sprite that is in line with the text. The reason why it's like at the bottom here is because my pivot points is, um, my pivot point is at the center. So I could go in my text file here and say that the pivot is not in the center, but it's at the bottom. Um, I could do this or um, a quick fix as well. What you can do is um, go back to that sprite asset right here and you can click on these image and, and kind of change them. So you have, uh, you can see here the, the height and you have the width and the, the X and Y position. Obviously you want to be careful with this because as you can see, um, you can move it or offset it. Okay, so offset on the X, offset on the Y. So I found this useful if you want to move instead of going in the script and change it. You can always do it here um, after. So see, I can do 128, for instance, make sure it's aligned with the, the, the thing. And I could offset it in the center a little bit. And there you go. Um, I don't know what SF means here, but I found that it was like the scale kind of. So if you want to make it bigger, okay, based on the pivot point, um, it is gonna um, uh, scale it up. So that's what I did for all of these here and to be able to um, uh, place different uh, inputs on uh, in my text. Another thing though that I forgot that is really important is um, that's for the, the sprites, that's pretty much it. But um, 
For the, the fonts, it's very similar because as you can see, TextMesh Pro doesn't use a normal font type, okay? For instance, here in my in my project, I have, let's say, uh, Donovan, Donovan here that I'd like to use. If I go and change the font in TextMesh Pro, I'm not necessarily gonna see D uh, Donovan here. So what you need to do is go back here in Window, TextMesh Pro, and create a font asset. So you choose uh, Donovan here, for instance. Where is it? Right here. And then you just, you can plus, uh, mess with the settings if you want, I usually don't. You generate the font atlas, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through the font asset that you have here, and regenerate a texture or a font atlas for um, for um, TextMesh Pro to use. <clears throat> the reason why it needs this, let me just show you here. Uh, let me save this here, Donovan SDF, I think it's called. <clears throat> the reason why you need this for TextMesh Pro is because it doesn't work the same way as a normal UI. Let me show you what I mean. If I duplicate this here, and I change this for the normal UI inside Unity, which is a uh, text. I know, what is it? Uh, yeah, it's text. Yeah, there you go. And I type the same thing, example, example text. Obviously I cannot put a sprite in here, but you get the point. You can see that it's not quite the same sharpness um, for the, the font. That's because Unity here uses a different algor algorithm to calculate the font, which is pixel-based, and this one does something else. That's why we need to create a font atlas, okay? Whenever you zoom in or zoom back, it's going to, like, adapt and get really, really crisp. So that's like another good side why you'd like to use this TextMesh Pro. Uh, so that is how you create your own font. You go here, and now you could choose Donovan, and as you can see, it works just fine. Um, yes. Another thing here is um, to be able to interact with this in code. If you are not, you don't know C Sharp and you are not a programmer, I'm not a programmer, but I'm still gonna show you how to use it in C Sharp. Um, you can skip and end the video here. Otherwise, if you're curious of how you could change the script in C Sharp, uh, the, um, the text in C Sharp and all the properties, I'm gonna show you really quick. I'm not, this is nothing fancy, but still. So I'm gonna create a C Sharp script and I'm gonna call this tutorial example okay I usually don't put caps letter like this it's just because I want to delete it when I'm done with this tutorial <laughs> let me just clear my code here you don't need this and um, we're gonna keep the start because we're gonna as soon as the game start we're gonna change the text the first thing you need is a um, I'm gonna create a variable that reference to my component text before, if you work with Unity, you do like text like this, and then you name your text. But in uh, TextMesh Pro, you need to actually add the TMP assembly like this, and then you can uh, reference TextMesh Pro UGUI component right here, and then I'm gonna say TMP. And then what I could do in the start is TMP dot text, or I could access different properties. And then I'm going to create a new text and I'm going to say new text and I'm going to put a new sprite as well. So sprite equal two. Why not? And that's it. So all you need to do is have uh, the assembly here for TM Pro and uh, then you use a text mesh pro GUI instead of just a text and that should be it. So I'm going to compile this. I'm going to add it right on the, um, the UI here when it's done compiling. All right. And then obviously we need a reference because I made a serialized private. So we need a reference here. And then that should be it. So you can see it says example text. And then as soon as I'm gonna press play, it should show uh, the text that I typed in code, which let me just minimize this a little bit, which is this new text. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do here for um, aligning sprites, changing the font, and uh, and coding it or access the properties or the components in, in your code. In case you're curious of um, the game that I we use right now as an example is called C4. Again, I'm gonna put links in the description. 
Um, if you have any questions, again, I'm not an expert. I've been using this plugin for two days now. But if you have any questions regarding um, Text Mesh Pro <clears throat> and how to use it in your um, in your game, or if you have um, comments on maybe I did something wrong or it's not optimized or whatever, I don't know. Let me know. I'll be glad to uh, to tweak my video or change or just know the best way to do it. Again, I've been using this for only one day and now it's second day for making this tutorial. So it's very new, um, as you can see here, uh, February 28th. So I haven't had the chance to play with it a lot, but I hope this helps a lot of people and uh, see you in another tutorials later on.